Assalamu alaikum Dr. Saeedun Hilal Today we will discuss uh, on a specific matter that is called acute uh, ischemic stroke why I am uh, giving this lecture because just now I got a call from my ex uh, from my teacher uh, and he uh, told me in, in the phone that uh, he got a stroke just uh, two or three years uh, two two and a half years back uh, suddenly he got uh, uh, during his sleep suddenly he got uh, and some unusual sensation in his uh, right side of the uh, brain in the morning time when he wake up uh, he saw his uh, left side was weak so just I after getting this uh, phone uh, I decided to make a presentation on this matter so this is a 68 years old male acute left-sided weakness and uh, in your uh, emergency room or in your chamber you can get this type of uh, history uh, this type of patient um, so many so let's move and let's go to uh, talk on these things whenever we get uh, the history that uh, left-sided weakness and it is acute it means suddenly it clicks on our head that it should be a stroke but beside the stroke, it can be some other diseases also. But the first, you have to think the first one, the most common one. So if it is an uh, acute left-sided weakness, means I think it is maybe stroke. So let's go to see uh, what, what, what is happening when there is a stroke. See some MRI. So when you get uh, this type of uh, patient, just give an MRI. Write down in the prescription advice, MRI of the brain. In bracket, you must write out that uh, DWI, diffusion weighted image. This is very important to, uh, to see just acute ischemic stroke. If there is a uh, possibility of the hemorrhage, no need to give the uh, MRI because uh, MR is a little bit costly than the CT scan and at that time you can give the CT scan uh, of the brain because in the CT scan of the brain you can see the blood very good but uh, MRI is always superior to the CT scan uh, regardless of it is uh, whether it is a uh, ischemic stroke or whether it's an hemorrhagic stroke but when you're thinking uh, that uh, it is an ischemic stroke please give MRI of the brain and uh, you must write the DWI diffusion weighted image I will show these things what can you see in the diffusion weighted image and the T1 image and the T2 image here you can see this the middle image it is a T1 image and it's a T1 image you can see the CSF is black <clears throat> and here you can see this is the pons. How can you understand this is the pons? In this type of section, if you see the, the big hole, the big hole, this is a big hole, then you can understand this is actually the fourth ventricle. Because in front of the cerebellum, there is a fourth ventricle space, and in front of the fourth ventricle, you can find the pons in the lateral view. So in this image, you can find if the hole is bigger, then in front of the bigger hole, the structure is pons. When you go upwards, you can find the aperture become narrower. So in front of the, that narrow aperture, you can find another structure that is not pons, that is uh, midbrain. When you go downwards for the fourth ventricle, the aperture become narrower again narrower and that time you can see in front of the uh, narrow uh, space you can find another structure that is not also the pons that is the midbrain and that, and that is the <coughs> medulla so when you are getting the bigger hole and in front of the bigger hole you can find the structure it is named the pons 
and the pawns you can see the pawns we know the structure of the pawns if there is a midline of the pawns and this is the left side of the pawns and this is the right side of the pawns just opposite of your brain opposite of your hands uh, so this is the left side this is the right side and this is high potence area little bit high potence area but it's very difficult to understand whether it is an ischemia or something else so for that reason we can do another type of mri that is called t2 image and in the t2 image you can find uh, the csf uh, is white you can see the fluid it's white you can see here the fluid is uh, white and black so in the so in the in the t2 in the t2 image you can find this is a the the csf is a white color so in the pawns you can see the hyper intensity hyper intensity so the signal become uh, high so this is a feature of infarction this is a dwi and diffusion weighted image you can see the right side of the pawns it is very much hyper intense high density because it restricted the um, movement of the fluid in the lateral view what I told you that in the lateral view we can see this is the cerebellum and this is the fourth ventricle and if you go up and if you go down the, uh, the aperture become narrower so when you can find the larger opening in front of the larger opening this feature is called the pons this is pons and this is the infarction and when you go upwards to this aperture you can go you can get another structure this is called the midbrain and if you go downwards again narrower in front of this narrow aperture you can get medulla and below the medulla our spinal cord starts this is the frontal view and obviously this is the posterior view this is occipital region and you know what it is and you know what it is i'm not discussing much more about these things our focus is on the pons area so when you see this type of uh, picture the white area you can understand in our mri language we can say the hyper intensity high signal or hyper hyper density so this uh, this reflects the feature of ischemia or infarction So now we are discussing uh, the things, the findings, restricted diffusion in the um, DWI view and the T2, hyper intensity of the right paramedian pons. You can see this the right paramedian pons and restriction diffusion in the uh, DWI. So what are the differential diagnosis? First, I'm saying that acute paramedian pontine ischemia, it could be and demyelination also occurs like this way at that time we just go for another uh, mri uh, spectrum and maybe it could be a pontine glioma also so our diagnosis is acute paramedian pontine ischemia so pontine uh, perforator artery infarction so we know the pontine perforator arteries if you uh, know the the blood supply of the pons you can see so now this is the, the this is the midbrain area this is the medulla area and this is the pons area and these are the cerebellum and you know these are the vertebral artery and this vertebral emits together near uh, near the below the pons and then go upwards as a basilar artery from the basilar artery we get the branches for the pons so there are different types of uh, um, branches for the pons 
the pons is supplied by the basilar artery contribution of this uh, main artery can be for the subdivided one is the paramedian branches to medial pontine uh, area you can see another thing is the short circumferential branches supply anterolateral pons and the long circumferential branches which go more laterally and over the anterior surface of the pons to anastomose with the branches of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery which is known as the ICA. So if you see this area, so look at this, this mm, brownish area, uh, purple area, uh, this is supplied by the basilar artery, paramedian branches, usually uh, it is penetrating around the branches and the lateral area, you will supply also circumferential branches or lateral pontine arteries which is a branch of the basilar artery and uh, anteriorly it is also supplied with the long circumferential artery so in the pontine perforated arteries already we discussed this is medial and paramedian perforating branches arises posteriorly and supply the medial and the paramedian pons and the lateral circumferential perforating arteries arises laterally and goes more over the uh, anteriorly and supply peripheral pons. Usually produce unilateral paramedial or lateral pontine infarction. If you go for the imaging, imaging feature and already discussed these things that the focal high potency uh, in the T1 image and T2 image hyper intensity and in the DWI, you can get the restricted diffusion of, of medial, paramedial, or lateral pons. So in the T1 image, you can get the focal high potency, a little bit darker. And T2 image, you can get the hyper intensity, white. And the restricted diffusion uh, image, you can DWI, you can get the white. <clears throat> the evaluate basilar artery for occlusion of the occlusion or the stenosis so what will happen when there is a paramedian pontine infarcts few motor hemi hemiparesis or one side paralysis this patient got the paralysis of the left side of the body so few motor hemiparesis sometimes it may cause the dysarthria speaking problem speech problem and it is very usual that he got the ataxia because the connection is with the cerebral lung so he got the ataxia that means when he try to work he doesn't get that much uh, control on his gait so it's an ataxia so obviously as it is an upper motor neural lesion you can get the upper motor neural lesion symptoms that means the all the and uh, jerk or air will be exaggerated the uh, superficial jar could be diminished there can be fine uh, you can find the um, plantar reflex um, absent the superficial reflex uh, obviously it is uh, so when you get the plantar reflex accent we get the a good sign we get an a guess sign we call it the Pavinsky sign that's in the extension of the plantar and uh, you can get the clonus also sometimes what will be treatment? The simply treatment for the stroke, ischemic stroke, and we know we can give the anticoagulation and or uh, thrombolysis. If it is the within the three to four hours, we can give the thrombolysis. If it is uh, after the three or four hours, usually doesn't work the thrombolysis, so we can prefer uh, prefer the anticoagulation. And uh, in, in our country, we are giving the uh, aspirin. Sometimes clopidogrel is uh, okay. Uh, in the literature suggests that clopidogrel and uh, ecosprin together uh, it acts a very good so uh, why that is an ischemia maybe inside the artery there is a blockage uh, it may it is made up by the, uh, the, the, the thrombus or the cholesterol um, or, or the cholesterol we know these things so to reduce the cholesterol level you have to give uh, any uh, statin group of drugs and uh, uh, I, I think that uh, for the weakness it will be better to give the physiotherapy 
uh, how long it depends on the patient's conditions uh, sometimes it uh, improves sometimes it doesn't improves but you have to have give the physiotherapy because the physiotherapy has two role on your uh, body on the weakness of the muscles one your weakness may may be uh, deteriorated uh, if you are not getting the proper physiotherapy, muscle wasting can be happening, long time paralysis patient or the long time paralysis patient. And if you are getting good physiotherapy, what will happen? We know there is a uh, uh, word plasticity or neuroplasticity uh, that uh, paramedium uh, the area it was infected so that that portion was dead, but the uh, other portion of the pons it was intact so we have to uh, we have to replace the dead uh, action of the dead uh, portions uh, with the the with an intact places so for that reason we want to uh, move our uh, weak mass weak uh, part of the body so that the signal goes to the brain and our intact portion will learn the new movement this is called neuroplasticity so this is all about the fontaine um, um, perforated artery infarction if you like these uh, videos please uh, share with the other uh, share it with your other friends and uh, doctors uh, and the colleagues and uh, treat your patient um, accordingly and uh, Thank you very much for being with us.